It might sound surprising, but sometimes it's easier to compute the derivative of the logarithm of a function than the derivative of the function itself. This is called logarithmic differentiation, and it is based on the new differentiation rule that we established last time, the inverse, inverse rule, which tells us that the derivative of the inverse of a function is 1 divided by the derivative of the function evaluated at the inverse. So if we apply this inverse rule to the exponential function e to the x, whose derivative is itself e to the x, and whose inverse is the natural logarithm of x, we obtain the derivative of the natural logarithm of x being 1 divided by e raised to the ln of x. And since, because e to the ln of x is simply x, we get that the derivative of the natural logarithm of x is simply 1 over x. Now we can extend this result further by combining it with the chain rule to get that the derivative of the natural logarithm of f of x is well, the derivative of the outer function as we've seen. So this 1 over the function, then it must be multiplied by the derivative of the inner function that is f prime of x. So this is why we get that the derivative of the natural logarithm of f is simply f prime of x divided by f. Now, if we multiply both sides of this relation by f of x, we get an expression for the derivative of f involving the derivative of the natural logarithm of f. So if it's easier to compute that derivative, we can still obtain the derivative of the function itself. Let's see this in action, this logarithmic differentiation, on an example where f of x equals x to the r, and r, the exponent, is any real number. Now, you may think to compute the derivative of this function is a simple application of the power rule. But let me remind you that so far we've only established the power rule for positive integer exponents, negative integer exponents, and rational exponents, fractions. So if r is the square root of 2, we do not know if the power rule applies. We will establish it using the logarithmic differentiation. So let's use the formula that we just derived up there and uh, substitute for f of x x to the r to get the derivative of x to the r being x to the r times the derivative of the natural logarithm of x to the r. And then before differentiating on the right hand side, we can use a law of logarithms that's, that tells us that the exponent may come down in front of the natural logarithm. So we get x to the r multiplied by the derivative of r times ln of x. Because r is just a constant, we can use the constant multiple rule to uh, factor it out and then we will be left with in the parentheses just ln of x so the derivative of ln of x is what we need that's that we com just computed is 1 over x and so we obtain r times x to the r times 1 over x after cancelling the x's we will of course obtain the generalized power rule so something that looks exactly like the power rule but also works with real exponents so we obtain that x to the r differentiated gives us r times x to the r, mi r minus 1. So this uh, works for any real exponent. Now you may think, how about x to the x, its derivative? So feel free to pause the video and think about it, because this is exactly what we will compute next. So use the logarithmic differentiation to compute the derivative of f of x equals x to the x. F pause the video and select your answer now. I hope you paused it and I've selected the last option. Let's see how we obtain that. So the derivative of x to the x is what we are after. And we had that formula that the derivative of f is simply f times the derivative of the natural logarithm of f. Again, before differentiating here on the right hand side, we can use a law of logarithms that tells us that this exponent x may come down in front of the logarithm and then we are differentiating the product of x and ln of x. You can use the product rule to do that. We get the derivative of x being 1 times ln of x plus x times the derivative of the natural logarithm of x which is 1 over x as we computed. So here we get simply 1 being multiplied by x to the x and then here is ln of x that's being multiplied by x to the x. Thus we obtain the derivative of x to the x. I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in the next one.